Welcome again, Nickens. At first glance, the anomaly we'll be examining today appears to be just another monster of an endless list. However, as we delve deeper into its study, we will uncover the dark and unsettling truth. We will find ourselves in a grey area, where the preservation of normalcy clashes with the survival of an entire species. Item number SCP-1000 Audio class, Heather Special Containment Procedures All media reports related to SCP-1000 are to be examined for potential verifiability. All organizations and individuals investigating SCP-1000's existence are to be kept under surveillance by Mobile Task Force ZF-1000 and discredited or administered amnestics. All physical signs of SCP-1000's existence must be retrieved and kept in Foundation custody and replaced with decoy items if necessary. Alleged sightings of SCP-1000 must always be investigated by MTF CETA-1000, however trivial the claim. Absolutely no contact with wild or captive instances of SCP-1000 is allowed without prior approval by Director Jones. Any interaction between SCP-1000 and humans, including Foundation personnel, must be reported to Director Jones immediately. Description SCP-1000 is a nocturnal, omnivorous ape, classified in the Hominini branch, along with the genera Pan and Homo. Adults range in size from 1.5 to 3 meters 5 to 10 feet in height, and weight between 90 and 270 kilograms 200 to 600 pounds. They have gray, brown, black, red, and occasionally white fur. They possess large eyes with good vision, a pronounced brow ridge, and a sagittal crest on the forehead similar to that of the gorilla, but present in both sexes. Their intelligence is on par with that of Pantroglodites, the common chimpanzee. SCP-1000 evolved alongside Homo sapiens, existing contemporaneously with proto-humans and humans in large numbers until 10,000 to 15,000 years ago, when an extinction event eliminated all but 1 to 5 percent of their population. This event was triggered by SCP-1000 contracting an anomalous pseudo-disease classified as SCP-1000-F1. This disease is passed on at a genetic level and affects every present-day instance of SCP-1000. The majority of SCP-1000 instances are born immune to the effect. Those who are not born immune quickly die. The effect of SCP-1000-F1 is as follows. Any hominid, including humans, chimpanzees, bonobos, and non-immune instances of SCP-1000 that directly or indirectly observes any instance of SCP-1000 has a minimum 2% chance of being instantly killed through anomalous means via permanent cessation of brain function. This percentage is cumulative, and the longer a human views SCP-1000, the higher the chance of instantaneous death increases, at a rate of plus 1% chance per 20 minutes of viewing. This effect varies between individual members of SCP-1000 species, with some individuals carrying a death chance of 90%. The effect is also produced by dead individuals, though small fur samples do not exhibit the effect. Known means of preventing this effect are small scale only and include See attached documents, level 3 clearance required. Because of SCP-1000's close relation to humanity, it is considered likely that SCP-1000-F1 could eventually transfer to human carriers. Any instance of SCP-1000 finding its way to a major population center constitute an class end-of-the-world scenario with a minimum death toll of and possible extinction of humanity. Fortunately, SCP-1000 appears to instinctively avoid human contact. It is not currently feasible to exterminate SCP-1000 entirely. The highest known population concentrations of SCP-1000 are at present located in the Pacific Northwest region of North America and the Himalayan mountain range in Asia. As of these populations remain extant. SCP-1000's presence and have also been documented within the past five years on every continent. All known significant populations of SCP-1000 
located near human population centers have been eliminated. SCP-1000 came to the attention of the Foundation via contact by Dr. Franz M in 14 with the Children of the Sun, who identified themselves as outcast members of the Serpent's Hand. This group has since been completely destroyed by the Foundation due to their reluctance to surrender information about the SCP-1000, SCP, and the SCP, since reclassified as SCP-1000- and SCP-1000. Remaining members have either joined the Foundation or have gone into hiding, presumably as members of the Serpent's Hand. Weapons, tools, and other unique pseudo-technological resources in possession of the organization have been classified as SCP-1000-001 through SCP-1000-. These resources have been made use of by the Foundation in multiple instances. For a full list, see document 1000-3534-Y, level 3 clearance required. Access to surviving ex-members of the Children of the Sun is restricted to personnel with clearance level 4-1000 unless given direct authorization for contact by Director Jones. Further information is available to personnel with clearance level 3-1000 or above. Personnel with clearance level 3-1000 or above are required to read document Alpha 1596-1000. Addendum 1000-466-X Update to Special Containment Procedures As of SCP-1000 Special Containment Procedures no longer include Procedure 516 Lumina Indicates that SCP-1000 may be developing a resistance to the sonic element Will not develop further So that Procedure 516 Lumina can still be used in emergency situations Investigation into alternate means of reliably keeping SCP-1000 away from human population centers is underway. Whether SCP-1000 resistance to Procedure 516 Lumina was calculated, and as such, may be a sign of SCP-1000, or coincidental, by chance of natural species variation, is not known at this time. Level 3 clearance required. Document Alpha 1596-1000, Missy from Director Jones. You've probably heard the rumors before. Everyone without the clearance level to know better wants to get their dig in. Did you hear Sasquatch is an SCP? Are we gonna capture and contain Bad Boy next? Yes, SCP-1000 is Bigfoot. I'm sure you've snickered. Don't worry. Contrary to rumors, we don't actually assign you to cater duty for finding something humorous. You think Bigfoot is funny because we want you to think Bigfoot is funny. We've bangrel Hollywood comedies and farcial documentaries, paid off men in gorilla suits, perpetuated hoaxes with bear prints and goat fur, bribe and brainwash cartoonists to get specially silly depictions on children's television. Even the term Bigfoot comes from us, planted in the media in 1958, a term people would find even harder to take seriously than Sasquatch. Why? We'll get to that. The information in the article that you've already read isn't entirely true. There are two direct lies, and plenty of lies of omission. There is no such thing as the anomalous pseudo-disease referred to as SCP-1000-F1. SCP-1000 does not possess a magical dead aura. In fact, SCP-1000 does not directly exhibit any anomalous effect whatsoever. We also lied about SCP-1000's intelligence level. SCP-1000 aren't chim level smart. They are smarter. To be precise, they are exactly as smart as us. That brings us to the lies of omission. That's what this letter is for. The lies came from me. So I figured the truth should come from me as well. This is the story we got from the Children of the Sun, who defected to us. It's a story we didn't believe, refused to believe, at first. As you've already read, the apes we call SCP-1000 evolved alongside us. We walked in the daytime, they walked in the nighttime, 
our nocturnal siblings in the shadows. But while we were still wandering hunter-gatherers, they change, like we would a few thousand years later. Tools, weapons, agriculture, domesticated animals, stable settlements. As humanity blinked into the Pleistocene sun, SCP-1000's population exploded across the night. They blanketed the planet in tens of billions. They made things that we still can't comprehend, even though we've thoroughly studied the surviving pieces. Organic technology. They made trees and birds of prey grow in fast-moving ships, herds of animals that became trains, bushes that became flying vehicles. From insects and pigeons, they made things equivalent to cell phones, television, computers, atomic bombs. The children describe vast shining cities, stretching across glaciers and penetrating the deepest caverns, grown skyships of ivory and spider silk, creatures tending them with hundreds of blinking eyes. We were rare, like gorillas are now, a few hundred thousand left at best. We avoided their settlements, just like wild animals today avoid us. SCP-1000 understood we were intelligent like them, but avoided us just as we avoided them. Saw us as fairies, as gnomes, as cried us supernatural powers, said we ate bad children while they slept in daylight. They fenced off our dwindling wild populations in conservatories, outlawed poaching, but in the underground consumed our bones as aphrodisiacs. Then their civilization fell. And we did it. By we, I don't mean the Foundation. By we, I mean humanity. The story is muddy. Supposedly, a trickster forest god showed humanity favor, showed us the master's tools and how to use them. Why we did it? We don't know. Perhaps they hunted us. Perhaps we were simply afraid. Perhaps it was just that they fenced us in, unintentionally or not. We simply don't know what the truth is. Somehow, we acquired SCP-1000's own technology, and with it, we instigated an SK-class dominance shift in which humanity became the dominant species of Earth. We wiped out 70% of SCP-1000's population in a single day. The Day of Flowers, the children called it. Supposedly, every flower bloomed that day, while our enemies died in their sleep. Then, we hunted the rest down. But we went further than just killing them. With a few of the more twisted SCP's devices, we drove the survivors mad, even those hiding beyond our reach. We trapped them in their own minds, blocking higher functions and leaving their bodies to fend off for themselves like any ordinary ape. We slaughtered the living machines and burned their vast shining cities with SCP-1000's bioweapons that reduced everything to slurry and dust that washed away or blew away in spring rain and wind. We left no traces, not even our own memory. We turned one of the weapons on ourselves, wiped out any knowledge of SCP-1000 and the greatest civilization the planet had ever seen. Only a few humans protected themselves from the effect, kept the forbidden knowledge, just in case. The rest of us went back to being hunter-gatherers, not the wiser. Which brings us to today. You're going to read all about this in the level 3 documentation, but I'll give you the short version here. SCP-1000 are somehow regaining their forgotten intelligence and knowledge. Maybe they never truly lost it, we don't know. This is why the ever-increasing number of Bigfoot sightings is so worrying. Why the attempts at contact, however indecipherable, are even more worrying. Yes, SCP-1000 are just like us. That's what makes them so dangerous. We wiped them out from history and memory. We dissolved their civilization and we slaughtered most of their species. Just ask yourselves. If they got the chance, what more would they do to us? 
a the Endron 1000-056 Dodge D. Instances of SCP-1000 have tried to make contact with Foundation personnel on multiple occasions. Most of these attempts at contact have untranslated, though recent attempts show that some instances of SCP-1000 are capable of communicating in English. Ancillary Anomaly Reports Addendum 1000-104-Y Certain acquired documents contain extensive reference to SCP-1000. Relevant is that the documents appear to be composed by entities associated directly with the location known as the Wonders Library. Context or significance of documents details not yet clarified. Addendum 1000-276-A Numerous anomalous objects with a known connection to SCP-1000. Prior cyclical iterations. As one example, SCP-2273 may not have a point of origin in a parallel timeline, but instead a prior iteration. SCP-2932, SCP-2511, and other sources of living cultural insight into SCP-1000, or a variation, all present consistent inconsistencies which may be used to create a fuller picture of the nature of these iterations, though conclusions are uncertain. Addendum 1000-276-Q Special Report This unnumbered black box, anomalous item anchored underneath the structure, is likely the most significant anomalous object known to have been utilized. Central to understanding SCP-1000's anomalous capabilities, including capabilities not developed directly, but accessed from prior. Modern day relevance to the Foundation and to society at large in a scenario of general containment failure. Log 1000-AD065-X1 The following is a rough translation of recent SCP-1000 attempts at communication with Foundation personnel on See attached documentation we forgive you. Given choice for now, not forever. Let us back in. In law. The SCP Foundation has created a cover up to conceal that Sasquatch was once the dominant species on Earth until we eradicated them. This discovery raises ethical and moral dilemmas about whether we should destroy, contain, or release the modern individuals of SCP 1000. We must not forget that one of the main missions of the GOC is to protect the normalcy and safety of humanity. However, we also must consider the ramifications of our own actions and the potential consequences of destroying or releasing these species. I will leave the final decision on how to proceed with this information to the central command of the GOC, hoping that their experience and wisdom will guide us to continue improving, not only as humans, but as a species guided by morality. You too can help us continue to send up to the Foundation by leaving comments and suggestions below. I am Virostris Anonimo, we are the GOC, and you have been informed.